to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the word of god says wine is a mocker strong drink is a brawler and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Proverbs chapter 20, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our topical study of the book of Proverbs. In today's lesson, we're going to be thinking about what the book of Proverbs has to say about alcohol use and abuse and how a godly person should look at alcohol. As always, we're so glad that you've joined us for our study together today. We want to encourage you to visit the Church of Christ in your area. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members and congregations of the Lord's Church. The Lord's Church in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their assembly. Uh, they'd love to sit down and talk about the Bible or have a Bible study with you. If you've got a Bible question or you'd like to know more about the Word of God, visit the local congregation of the Church of Christ in your area. Here at the Gospel of Christ, we'd also like to help you in your study of the Word of God. Please visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a wide variety of Bible study tools available. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson in a video or audio format, we'd be happy to provide those to you free of charge. Just go to our website and fill out a free media request, and we'll send those to you free as well. There's a good bit of Bible information that we'd like to share with you, and we hope you'll visit our website uh, to access that as well. As we think today about what the book of Proverbs has to say on the subject of alcohol, friend, we want to direct our attention to the Word of God. Today we're not asking what is modern opinion on the use of alcohol. We're not asking what does society say, what, does, uh, what do people who have a higher education say. We're not even looking at what the medical field says about this. We're asking what does God say? What does the Bible say on the godly individual and alcohol in the book of Proverbs? Friend, the first thing that we're going to learn very vividly in the book of Proverbs is that alcohol is not going to lead you down the path to greater wisdom. Now that's important in the book of Proverbs because God wants us to be wise. God wants to, us to have wisdom. Proverbs 1 verse 7, we're told to pray for wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5, and it ought to be a part of every Christian's life. But alcohol is not going to contribute to that. How do we know that? I want you to take your Bible and look in Proverbs chapter 20 with me for just a moment. I want you to notice what Proverbs chapter 20 Verse number one says about alcohol. The scripture says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Now, friend, you think about those vivid words. What is someone, how, what's a, a, a mocker? That's somebody who makes fun of you. That's somebody who maybe makes you the, uh, the laughing stock of every joke, as it were. Somebody who likes to pick at you. or Everybody's had somebody in life who thought that you were the best thing to make fun of. Well, friend, that's what wine is going to do. Wine is going to make a mockery. It's going to laugh at you. It's going to put you in situations where you're the laughing stock of every uh, joke, as it were. Strong drink, it says. We're talking about now moving from just wine, which may have lower contents of alcohol, to something stronger, whiskey and, and things like under that. Strong drink, it's a brawler. How many mild-mannered, kind, nice people have we all known that when they get a few drinks in them are not that same person? They kind of change real quickly. And the problem is that alcohol lowers one's inhibition. It causes us maybe to do things and say things. It takes away one's filter. It takes away our self-control. And it's going to cause you to do and say things. It may even make somebody want to fight. Did you know that a lot of, a big majority of 
domestic abuse calls are directly related to alcohol use and abuse. A lot of the people in those have been using substances they shouldn't have. How many wives or husbands have been in fights and it would not never gone that far maybe if someone hadn't been under the influence of alcohol. And above all else, the scripture says in Proverbs 20 verse 1, the person who is led astray by alcohol is not wise. Friend, if I'm in a fight for my eternal soul, Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 17, 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 through 5, if every day the devil is trying to tempt me and cause me to lose my soul, Job 1 verse 6, 1 Peter 5 verse 8, I need every bit of wisdom I can attain to defeat him. I need God's help and I need everything I can get to beat the devil in the choices that I make. And friend, realize alcohol is not going to help you in that area. The Bible does not portray it in a good light and every Christian needs to realize the negative value of that. But friend, as you think about alcohol and alcoholism, maybe especially in the Scripture, let's realize that the, the, the use and abuse of this substance the Bible also teaches is going to lead to a life of poverty that has no self-control in it. Listen to these two verses from the book of Proverbs. I want you to follow along in your Bible. Turn to Proverbs chapter 21, verse number 17. Proverbs 21, 17. The Bible says, He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. Now look in Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 21. The Scripture says, For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. A friend, I realize as well as you, that not every case of poverty and not all poor people have substance abuse problems or are alcoholics. I understand that. But friend, one whose life is consumed by, one who is in love with pleasure, in love with wine, who is addicted to, who's the drunkard and the glutton, has no self-control when it comes to those things. And we've all seen people. Friend, we've all seen people who are addicted to alcohol, addicted to drugs, and they would sell just about anything out for their next drink or their next hit. Let's realize that the, the, the abuse of those substances the Bible clearly teaches is going to lead to a life of poverty. If, if, if everything I've got I'm using toward that or is working toward that, if that's my main focus in life, that's going to be a real problem. How many families? Think about this. How many families have been so negatively affected by an alcoholic? I can think of people that I know, you can think of people as well, that they were addicted to some type of substance, alcohol or drugs. And as a result, not only did they suffer, the whole family suffered. Uh, from the school system, you can see kids who come to school dirt poor. And it's not that their family doesn't work necessarily or, or even make a living. But all the money that family gets, one selfish individual might spend on drugs or alcohol and a whole lot of neglect goes on because of that. The book of Proverbs teaches us that alcohol abuse and alcoholism, the use of it, that's eventually going to lead to a life of poverty and especially spiritual poverty. You cannot have the riches of Christ and let that type of addiction rule your life. Then as we look to the book of Proverbs, there are some other very practical lessons we learn about alcohol. The Bible teaches us that godly people should not want to associate with the drunken crowd. Again, I encourage you to take your Bible and look with me in Proverbs chapter 23. And I want you to notice what the Word of God says in verse number 20. It's Proverbs 23, verse number 20. The Scripture says this, Do not mix or associate with wine-bibbers or with gluttonous eaters of meat. In this context, both of these people, the gluttonous eater of meat or the wine-bibber, is the one who has absolutely no self-control when it comes to alcohol or food. Someone who lacks complete self-control. How does the Christian 
teach us to react to or to relate to people like that. Don't mix, don't associate with wine bearers, alcoholics, drug users, people whose whole interest is all around that. The Christian ought not to run with that crowd. We say, well, why shouldn't we associate with them? Now, friend, we're not talking about trying to be friendly to them. That's not what the Bible is discussing here. We're not talking about trying to reach them with the gospel or do good to people like that. We ought to do good to them, no doubt. But we're talking about making those people your closest friends. Running with that crowd will not help you to be a godly person. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 31, that evil companions corrupt good morals. If I'm around that crowd, now you think about this, if I'm around a crowd that is full of, uh, of drunks or drug addicts or people who have no self-control when it comes to food or whatever, friend, is that going to affect me at least in some ways? Well, sure it is. Running with those kind of people, you're going to hear language you might not, that you might not need to. You're going to see actions you might not need to see. And people who have no self-control, they have no regard for law or right or good many times. And so what's the best advice? Don't associate with people like that. Don't mix with them. Don't make them your closest friends because they might rub off on you in the wrong way. And then the book of Proverbs teaches us as well as it relates to alcohol that uh, drunkenness and alcohol, listen carefully now, the, the, you, see the, you see the commercials on TV and it's totally different than this. But drunkenness and alcohol, what's it really going to lead to? It's going to lead to a life of sorrow and pain. As we mentioned, that's not how the beer and the liquor industry is going to portray it. They're going to have commercials and magazines and all the, the media that they put out is going to picture it in a totally different light. All these good-looking, well-fit, rich people with beautiful mates and the best cars you can imagine. And the, and the idea is big homes, everything's great. The idea is if you drink this or you partake in this, you can be like that. My friend, that's not the picture the Bible portrays. I want you to take your Bible and look in Proverbs 23, verses 29 through 30, and I want you to see that the real picture of drunkenness is that it's going to lead to a life of sorrow and pain. Look in Proverbs 23, verses 29 and 30. Here's the questions. Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has uh, strife or fights? Who has complaining? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Well, here's the answer. Those who tarry long over wine. Those who go in search of mixed wine. The person that has a, a life of woe, meaning a heartache and heartbreak, sorrow, tears and anguish and, and relationship troubles, all kind of fights, uh, complaints, uh, wounds without cause, the, 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 the symptoms, uh, redness of eyes. Who's got all that? My friend, that's the clear picture. That's the real picture of the person who's tearing over the wine, the person who's going in search of mixed drinks. Friend, don't buy into the idea that if you take in this, you partake in this alcohol or, or you smoke this joint or you sniff this drug, that you're going to be popular and strong and with the in crowd and your life is going to be the best life ever. Friend, that's just not true. You're being lied to, and you need to realize that type of life is going to lead to a whole lot of sorrow and a whole lot of pain. How many people end up with bad, bad sicknesses because of alcohol abuse or drug abuse? Friend, I visit people regularly in the jail who their lives are broken. Their health is horrible. Their children are home without a mom or dad because they've got a substance abuse problem. How many marriages have ended? People who loved each other dearly and marriages are broken and ended because of one person having a substance abuse problem. Friend, this is what it's like every day. This is the reality. This is not the way it's portrayed. This is what it's really like inside the life of somebody who has that problem. 
And so we want to be clear on what the Bible teaches about the use of alcohol and drugs and things like unto that. And then as we look further to the book of Proverbs as it relates to alcohol use, let's realize that although alcohol looks smooth and appealing, its sting is unbearable. I want you again to open your Old Testament to Proverbs chapter 23, and, and here is such a, a vivid image of how it really is. Proverbs 23, would you look with me in verses 31 and 32. The Bible says, Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Now this is the way, as we said earlier, this is the way it's portrayed. It's, it's, it's beautiful, red, luxurious, just attractive is the idea. It's sparkling in the cup, just so appealing. Swirls around so smoothly in that beautiful wine glass. What's it really like? You know, if the, if the wine bottle had a skull and crossbones, or if the wine bottle had a snake with its mouth open, maybe that'd be a better picture. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. How many of us would, in our right mind, want to get bit by a snake? I know I wouldn't. I'm terrified of snakes. I'll hurt myself sometimes trying to get away from them. If I said to you, here, pet this water moccasin, pet this little rattlesnake right here for me, would you do that? Uh, here's a viper. Would you let him bite you? you just imagine that viper fanned out and say, here, Stick your hand here and let's try that and see if it really hurts. Would you do that? Well, nobody in their right mind would do that. What's the point? It looks red and attractive. It swirls, it sparkles in the cup and swirls around so smoothly, but it is so deceptive. In the end, its bite is like a snake and it's going to hurt you like a viper. It's deadly is the idea. Don't be fooled by the way it may look at first, because it's going to leave you in a lot worse shape than it looked like it might. And so realize the, the harm that it can do is what the book of Proverbs is getting at. Now, I want you to notice this also. Stay in Proverbs chapter 23, and I want you to look this time in verse number 33, and here's what Proverbs teaches about alcohol. Alcohol is going to make you see and do things that you might not normally see or do. It's going to lower your inhibition and it is going to uh, take down the barriers of self-control you might have. Look in Proverbs 23, verse number 33. The Bible says this, Proverbs 23. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. You know, I hear about people occasionally who people you would never imagine doing something like this. Somebody who's got living a good, stable life, and then they get caught up in some type of substance abuse, and the next thing we know, they've, they've broken into somebody's house, they've uh, hurt somebody or done something even worse than that, and we say, why did that person who I've known all my life do that? They would never do that in their right mind. Well, that's the point. Under the influence, they're going to say and do things they naturally would not say and do. It lowers your self-control, the filters that we all have rightly put in place, the guards that we put over our heart and mind, those are broken down with every drink that one takes. How many young people, you think about this, how many young people who were raised with good morals, who believe in right and wrong, who even believe in the sanctity of marriage, have gone to a party, partaken in alcohol or drugs, maybe got drunk, and they end up in sexual immorality. And nine months later, you're changing diapers. H how many times has that occurred? People who wouldn't probably have done that. People who knew that was wrong, and yet get a few drinks in them. And they now have changed their views on that, which they strongly held to before. From what we're trying to get across, the Bible is trying to get across is, alcohol is not going to help you in fighting the good fight. 1 Timothy 6, verse 12. It is not going to help you to have self-control and really fight off the devil like you ought to. It's going to weaken your defenses against the devil. You know, here's how I see it. Here's how, from the picture that we see in the Bible, every drink that a person takes 
the devil sits back and laughs because he knows he's one step closer to getting you to do something sinful that will ultimately cost you your soul. That's the real way that you need to see alcohol. And then as we look to the book of Proverbs and what it says about alcohol, friend, don't really know how to say this without just being as blunt and pointed as we can. From Proverbs 23, verses 34 and 35, the picture here is that alcohol is going to leave a person in a state of utter stupidity. And stupidity has to be the word for this. Look at what the Bible says in Proverbs 23, verses 34 and 35. Look at the individual here. This drunk man says, Yes, you'll be like one who lies down in the midst of the sea, or like one who lies at the top of the mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? We think to ourselves, what in, what's wrong with that person? What are you doing lying down in the middle of the sea anyway? Why are you at the top of the mass shouting these things out? They hit me. I didn't feel it. They've beaten me. It didn't hurt. Give me another drink. I'm ready to go again is kind of the idea. Well, look at the utter state, the state of utter stupidity that person is left in. How many people have you seen? You've seen people who were drunk acting like a fool, saying things that they're just not right, maybe ready to fight, or how many people have you seen with burn marks on their arm? They wake up the next morning and, boy, those things really hurt. How'd they get there? I don't know. I didn't feel it. Well, that's the state of utter stupidity that alcohol use and abuse is going to leave you in. It's not going to make you wiser. It's not going to make you smarter. It's not going to make you sharper. It's going to leave you in a state that is really harmful to you. But friend, there's another lesson we learned from the book of Proverbs, and I'm, I really want you to focus in on this idea with me. In the book of Proverbs, we learn clearly from, from Solomon and from uh, the writer of this book as well, the royalty and people in positions of authority and power who are trying to live honorable lives ought not to use alcohol. Alcohol ought not to be used by people who are royalty. And we'll express the meaning of that in just a moment. But look in Proverbs 31, verse 4. Here's what the Scripture says. Notice Proverbs 31, verse number 4. The Bible says, It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink. The writer here is encouraging uh, Solomon or whoever it may be who is of royalty, who is either a king or a prince, that alcohol, drinking wine, is not for people in those type of positions. Someone who's got a rule over others, someone in a position of authority, someone who is looked up to by others, someone who is leading by an example, it's not for kings to drink wine. Why? Because that would ruin everything they're trying to build up and do. Now, what's the application? Christians are a royal nation. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and in Revelation 1, verse 6, we're told this, God has made Christians, has made us Christians, kings and priests, to His God forever, to Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. We are, we are a people of royalty. We're God's own special people. Titus 2, 2 verses 11 through 13. We ought to live as an example to the world. We want to be seen in a good light and express God in a good light. And friend, if that's the case, alcohol is something that ought not to be associated with a Christian. Alcohol can cause one to forget God's law and to pervert justice. Notice Proverbs 31 verse 5. The Bible says of those princes and kings that they ought not to drink alcohol lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the injustice of the afflicted. Why does a Christian not want to partake in those things? We've seen a multitude of reasons why and those reasons are good and right in the sight of God. But ultimately, I don't want to forget God's law and I don't want to cause justice or that which is right to be perverted by my life. Here's what the Bible says for a Christian. Be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. If the devil is actively trying 
to tempt me and you. If he wants to have his way in my life and yours and wants to ruin my life and make me a child of his, and I don't want that, and I want to go to heaven, and I want to live right. And friend, I don't want to put something in my body which is going to lower my defenses, which has the ability to lower my defenses, which has the ability to affect my cognitive function and spiritually to make me do things I might not want to do. And so the encouragement today for each of us is let's live our lives with sobriety. Let's live in view of the hope and the joy of God every day. God doesn't want us walking around inebriated, but He does want us to have the joy, the happiness, and the hope that every Christian ought to have. Friend, we ask you today to consider seriously your own life. Ask yourself, are you really living it for God? And friend, if there are, if there are problems, if there are addictions, if you're using things in your life that are not right, friend, why not make those changes? God wants to help you. Christians want to help you. The Bible gives us the guidance to do that. Make those changes and God will bless your life and help you to live in such a way that will bring honor and glory to Him. If you're not a Christian, as always, we want to encourage you to obey the gospel of Christ. Do you really believe Jesus is the Savior of the world? That He's the way, the truth, and the life? That no man comes to the Father except by Him? John 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to repent? Jesus said, unless you repent. Change your way of acting and change your way of thinking. Or change your way of thinking and change your way of acting. Unless you repent, you'll all likewise perish. Luke 13, verse 3. Would you confess the beautiful name of Jesus before men? Romans 10, verse 10. And would you do as Jesus said in Mark 16, 16? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. And friend, may each of us be encouraged to stay away from things that are going to hurt us physically, harm us spiritually, and have the ability to lower our self-control in our fight against the devil. May God help each of us to fight the good fight of faith and give our lives to the gospel of Jesus Christ. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study material, as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form. Or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905. Or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.